All right. Well, Acolyte Finale is here, and I'm going to give you spoilers in three, two, one. If you don't want them, you should be gone. Well, first, Soul is dead. Osha is, air quotes, turned to the dark side and is training with Kamir, the stranger. May got her memory wiped in order to be set free, and so that that's why Osha decided to train with Kamir. Uh, the headmaster Jedi is very sketchy, and they're pinning everything on Soul's dead body now. And the acolyte is con contradicting itself. Yoda shows up, and if you know, look up on screen right here, boom, this guy shows up if you can see it. That's Plagueis. Um, I don't have a lot of knowledge on Plagueis, and I'm going to get more into that in uh, this video. But, yeah, there, <laughs> there you have it. The Acolyte, it, 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 this, this show really served no purpose. And another spoiler, right, is that all seven episodes, all eight episodes of this show have ended on a cliffhanger. There, nothing was concluded anywhere. There was no, okay, this was wrapped up, put a bow on it, whatever. This is leading into a second season, air quotes, which, good Lord. Uh, but yeah, Plagueis is here. And like I was saying, Plagueis is the master of Palpatine. And if you've watched Revenge of the Sith, which I don't know how many of you haven't seen that, but it, Darth Plagueis the Wise, it's to be seen or shown that Plagueis has learned about creating life from the force from these witches and Osha and May, and he's creeping on the same island as Kamir, and it looks like Kamir is training under Plagueis, but maybe they got in a duel and Kamir thinks he killed Plagueis, so now he's going to train Osha, and then... What is happening, right? What is happening? And I really don't want to go beat for beat with in this show, but there are several scenes where I was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. And many scenes where I was like, but you said this like an episode ago. The biggest thing for me is that oh, uh, May and Soul are talking about what happened, right? Um, about... Uh, soul killing their mother and he first says it was an accident on the ship he says it was an accident then you have the confrontation on the ground and then soul says i made the right choice saying i made the right choice by killing your mother so that you two you two were in danger and i needed to take you two well <laughs> this just makes no sense right and then he says that the Jedi wouldn't have believed in the virgins because, oh, yeah, let me backtrack again a little bit. Osha and May aren't actually twins. They are one half, separate halves of the same person. They're the same person, just the light and the dark. But Osha, who is the light, got corrupted and became the darkness. Or maybe May is the, the light. That You know what I mean? But anyway... Soul says <laughs> there would have been no proof of this magic or the virgins if I didn't have May. As if there weren't a bunch of Jedi Knights and Jedi Masters with you on this endeavor who saw both of them and the ritual and the witch's magic who witnessed this stuff, but you needed May for actual proof when jedi who were sent on this mission by the council what, what do you mean that makes no sense the next thing that really gets me is soul is talking to osha and may about what happened and he says i tried to save both of you i couldn't save both of you yes you could have instead of holding the stupid bridge that was causing them that, that you know that was about to crumble you could have just held them with the force and brought them to you. What I, I don't understand this show's logic, man. I really don't. Now, there was a whole back and forth with Kamir and, and Osha about training and all this stuff. And she's like, I'm not my sister. I'm not my sister. I'm not my sister. This and that, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> well, the, the main plot of this show is that it gets exposed that... Um, 
Soul, uh, Osha finds out Soul killed her mother and he ends up killing or she ends up killing Soul, crushing his throat, suffocating him, killing him with the force, bleeding his crystal in the process. Now, I have never been a fan of the whole crystal bleeding thing, but there was the Vader comic where he bled his crystal and he went through a whole ordeal a whole ordeal where he thought he was fighting someone else. And it's just a crazy good comic with this OSHA. Like it takes a lot to bleed a crystal so much so that Kylo fractured his right. You have to have so much hate and anger and disdain and, and turn to the dark side in order to bleed a crystal. Well, she kind of just bleeds it by looking constipated and gripping the lightsaber. While it is cool to see a lightsaber be bled on screen, it's kind of weird how just uninterested she looked. Like there was no shaking sound effects. There was no, you know, rattling of the saber. Like people, like there was nothing. It was just, she looked really constipated and was staring at Sol while choking him and the saber starts bleeding. Now, now, the other thing that really, 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 really got me was at the end where essentially they're uh, uh, the, I can't even remember her name, the bald green chick. She is basically putting everything on Soul. Um, even though a couple episodes ago, she was like, Soul is my best guy. Soul is my, my go-to guy. Soul is my, my number one. And somehow they're getting that Soul killed everybody. So he went and he killed this coven of witches. And then out in the forest, he killed all the other Jedi Knights only to go back to Brendock and kill himself. But again, here's the other contradiction. The group that, that she was with that go to Brendock, when they capture May, who I'm going to get that, I'm going to get to that in a second. They capture May and they tell her that she killed someone because the only people they find is Soul and May. Now, obviously, she has some connections to Kamir. I'm going to assume that he was her apprentice. It's pretty obvious. And so instead of her saying, oh, my apprentice went rogue and all that stuff, and he's killing Jedi, and he killed Soul, even though obviously they can't prove that he killed Soul, but whatever. They're just pinning everything on Soul. Now, the other contradiction that she had, right? She's having this talk about this council guy, and he's like, uh, you're the, 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 the councilman guy comes to talk to her, and she's he's like, uh, this is a really big issue. Like, five Jedi were killed, and you haven't told the council about it. You haven't told the the uh, the uh, Senate about it. And sorry, he's not a, a council guy, he's a Senate guy. Um, we need to do an external investigation. The Jedi can't be in investigating themselves anymore. And she's, he's, he, she, uh, she tells him that, you know, a bunch of Jedi were murdered and he's like, well, who were they murdered by? Was the person who killed them a Jedi? And she says close enough. What does that mean? What, what does that mean? Because I'm sorry, if a Jedi turns coat on other Jedi and starts killing all these other Jedi, he's not a Jedi anymore. Like that, obviously she's trying to push down her own feck up by, you know, obviously I think, I'm pretty sure her and Kamir got into a fight. She thought she killed him. He ended up getting away because there's a scene when she comes off the ship on Brendok, she instantly senses Kamir because his helmet is off. Um, And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just blown away by that wording, by that writing. It's like, was he a Jedi? Was the person who killed him a Jedi? Close enough. What does that mean? Like, I rewound that scene or that part like three times to make sure I heard that. And she just says close enough. I don't know if she's saying like that's close enough or you're you're pushing too much. Or, no, yeah, they were close enough to being a Jedi. Like, I don't understand what that means. Now, the whole May getting her memory wiped thing, I've never heard of that with the Force in Star Wars, and here's my hot take on the Force, right? My hot take on the Force is that if you are constantly keeping stuff limited beyond a certain thing, like I remember when The Rise of Skywalker came out, everybody was freaking out that Rey used Force healing when she literally has the books, right? 
But then the Mandalorian comes out, and everyone's fine with it when Grogu uses it, a literal child. Yeah, he's 50 years old, but he's a child who didn't even finish his training in the Jedi Temple. So, this, this my my take on it is, like, I'm fine with it if it's done in a way that makes sense and it's explained in a way that makes sense. And, again, the whole Rey doing it thing, you literally see that she has the ancient Jedi text. It tells her everything she needs to know, blah, blah, blah. So, with May getting her memory wiped, I, I didn't have an issue with that. The thing I had an issue with was that she was acting like she was like lobotomized and maybe that was the the whole issue right she was kind of just spaced out but to be fair that's what the actress is freaking uh what her performance has been this whole time like she's out here just acting like it's she look constantly looks like she's constipated there's no emotion in anything so after or when the jedi come and they capture her towards the end of the episode capture me uh, they're like, put all your weapons down on the ground, if you have any, and put your hands up. And she puts her hands up like, what did I do? And she, and they're like, you're under arrest. And she's like, what did I do? I'd be like, um, what, what did I do? What is going on here? And then when she's in the Jedi Master's quarters, and she's like, we need to talk. And they're like, what? Do you know what you're here for? And she, uh, May goes, I, they told me I killed someone. And instead of she like I instead of being like I they told me I killed someone I don't know what's going on this and that blah 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 blah, and the act the, the the performance is just stale right the performance to me just isn't good I'm sitting here wishing they could rush her scenes because it's just not good at all I think the only time the acting was all right was when she was basically saying goodbye to May, um, and that's about it. Right. So the scenes that I was like, okay with what the, the, okay. So the saber fighting to me, I don't know. It was all right. It was all right. The choreography was something, but there was a, there's a part where soul has an opening to slash Kamir. He turns his lightsaber off, does a weird flip, does this Liu Kang kick drops back down and turns his lightsaber on and i'm like what is their obsession with turning their lightsabers on and off now they were in a blade lockup and it was right before kamir was gonna grab soul saber and bash it with his helmet right so instead of him just pushing off and moving his lightsaber out of the way he does do this technique which i've, I've heard it was like very frowned upon it's when you turn your lightsaber off mid-fight and then turn it back on to attack him somewhere else but he basically turns his lightsaber off so Kamir can't turn it off with his helmet and deactivate it. Well, he turns it off anyway and attacks him without a lightsaber anyway. Um, so I'm just like, you had an opening. If you would have just moved your lightsaber slightly over, then what? Um, and then a thing that Kamir does to me, which is so stupid, so, <laughs> so stupid, is... Kamir takes both of his blades because he's got the little Shoto blade and his regular blade and he throws them both at Soul. And while he's doing this, he's then doing some weird tutting and then jumps at Soul with a closed fist. He's jumping at an enemy unarmed who is armed with a lightsaber. Now he's controlling the blades to come around from the side while he attacks at the front. What? makes no sense because soul just repulsor blasts the sabers and him away and i'm like what a, why <laughs> that didn't make sense um i've gone on record and said that i actually really do like hand-to-hand -hand fighting in star wars right but the may and osha stuff to me was a little <sighs> there's a part where osha gets punched and she falls back and almost is like doing a kip up, right? She falls back and her legs are already in the air. Like, cause she's on her back, her legs are in the air about to do a kip up. But May then goes for a low sweep to sweep what? Her legs are already off the ground. She's on the ground the way you want her to be. Wait for her to kip back up and punch her back in the face. But she does some low sweep and then Osha kips up over that. And I was like, what? what is this like if you're doing hand-to-hand -hand stuff make it make sense now 
on the subject of this fight, they're in the room that May set ablaze. May's already in there. Osha comes in, and uh, May was uh, Osha's saying, "This is all your fault. Look what you did. All the death that happened here." And then May says, <laughs> "May." says i didn't do this mother you did you literally set this whole place on fire no one's lying when they say that may started the fire that may blew up this place soul may have killed your mom but then your other mom possessed a wookie tried to kill the jedi and then all the other witches were possessing this wookie apparently and may put points out a good plot you locked everybody in here and then started the fire, which then caused this whole place to blow up. Because Soul killed your one mom does not mean that he killed everybody else. May is the reason for that. So if they got, if they passed out or whatever it may be after, um, I can't remember her name, but that one Jedi lady takes, you know, the possession away from Cal Naka and, uh, if I'm pronouncing his name right, and all the other Jedi, just, all the other witches just fall over in that last episode. Well, if they were knocked out or something, the place blows up anyway because of May. So yes, you did do this. Yeah, Soul killed your mom, which he first claimed was an accident and then said it was the right choice. But you did everything. <laughs> you did everything else. This is just why I'm so confused about the writing in the show and i have seen an interview where leslie headland and someone else is saying that this is essentially a dnd campaign or a star wars dnd campaign that they had thought up themselves now let me get to the point the the thing of plagueis right i don't know a lot about plagueis plagueis has never really been on my radar um the most i know is what we were told in episode three and i know a lot of people are already freaking out online about, oh, well, Plagueis is this, Plagueis is that, this is how long he's been alive. I I do not know these things. I don't, I really don't know. Um, I don't know what he's doing on this planet. I don't know what his motivation is. Um, but uh, um, to my next point, right, to my next point, this show accomplished nothing. It got more people killed than mystery solved. People, they're li like, there's a scene, the scene where they are choosing to wipe May's mind, right? And Osha says, well, they'll just use you to get to me, to find me. That was literally what the plot was with Osha at the beginning of the show. The Jedi used Osha to find May. Now they're just flipping the script and using May to find Kamir. That's all that's happening. Another ragtag group of Jedi Knights are going to use this one of these twins to track down this bad guy who's been killing Jedi. <laughs> like, what do you... This, sir, this accomplished nothing other than one person, air quotes, turning to the dark side. Because if she did turn to the dark side and was fully committed to the dark side, like her bleeding a saber, bleeding a crystal showed, then she wouldn't have been like, uh, let me go and I'll train with you. No. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just the same plot now from a different POV. And to be honest, if they would have just went with this one, where it's th that lady's apprentice who's now training with Plagueis, and she was going after him, but people would probably be like, oh, well, they're just rehashing the Anakin stuff. It's like they're taking it from a different angle. And I'd be okay with that, but this whole season was just a waste of time. Well, it's just a waste of time. It's it's served nothing. I I really don't care for the initial Yord or or Jackie or any of those other people. But there were there is a big population of Star Wars fans who do, and it's kind of messed up that they were just cannon fodder for nothing. It this the guy who killed them is still alive, and they're going. The only person, now we don't know what she said to Yoda, but the only other person who knows that she, the greenhead bald lady, is involved with Kamir is May. So, I don't know, y'all. I, I don't know. I don't know. This show 
it felt like it was just a waste of time. It's going to inevitably, in my mind, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but it, I feel it's going to get a season two, just how this ended. They end with uh, Osha and Kamir looking out on the sea, and they kind of hold hands around a lightsaber, and then it ends with Green Bald Head Lady saying, Master, sorry to trouble you. Um, we need to talk. And it shows Yoda from behind. And I'm like, motherfucker, Yoda should already know about those five Jedi who got killed. He could sense Order 66 going on, and he could literally sense Anakin killing the Tusken Raiders. I'm sure he should know about those five freaking Jedi on that planet who were murdered. Now, there's the argument to be said since Palpatine was clouding the Jedi's mind, Plagueis may be cloudy, clouding the Jedi's mind from what's going on with Kamir. I don't know. But what is kind of questionable is if that is the case, then how the heck was Green Baldhead Lady able to sense Kamir on Brendok? What, the first thing when she steps off the ship. I don't know. I, I do not know. But and I'd say we'll find out in season two. But just like, honestly, if this show, if every episode in this show was an hour long, they could have tied this all in a bow and given us something really great. But they didn't because for what? This is a finale and it was 49 minutes give and take because of intro recap credits. Right. It felt like a waste of time. It felt like a waste of time. Now. I know there's a whole politics behind this of they're pushing agendas and this and that. I am not and will not be discussing that stuff within these. I am simply reviewing what was shown on screen story-wise, Star Wars-wise. And story-wise, Star Wars-wise, this was a waste of time and it didn't tell or bring anything together. It didn't tell any sort of story. It just kept contradicting itself. The biggest one for me was First Soul says it was a mistake. It was by accident. I didn't mean to do it. By killing killing your mother was an accident. And then he says, I made the right choice. Like, I don't get it, man. I, I guess the meaning mistake has a different definition nowadays because so many people are using mistake for, like, I accidentally killed your mom. If if the mistake was that he was dealing dueling with the one lady and the horn lady, I can't, I can't remember her name, the coral, um, if, if soul was dueling with Quar quarrel and then may and the mother were actually trying to get away, but may would being closer to coral was like, no, stop fighting, stop fighting ends up running off. And then the other mother comes after and coral does something where she like wh whips Kamir's saber into the mom. Then, okay, there's your accident right there. But, like, he straight up turns his lightsaber on and stabs her when she's poofing away. I don't get it. I don't. But, my friends, I'm going to give this show a rating um, out of 10, uh, just like I did with every every show that I did on the Dead Kings podcast. This show, to me, is getting a 3 out of, five, uh, three out of 10. Um, in short... Soundtrack wasn't great. Fight choreography was good in episode five. Fight choreography here was kind of eh. Um, Story-wise, I feel it accomplished nothing. It didn't really tell a story. Um, there were times, I think, when she was even talking to that Senate guy that uh, it seemed like they were just, like, it was just a painted backdrop and they were talking. It didn't, it all felt 2D. It didn't feel lived and it didn't feel organic. But that's really, I don't know, the whole, the whole show also ending on cliffhangers, it was never really like, oh, dang, man, I can't wait for next week. It's all, oh, what the heck, man? Give us 20 more minutes and this doesn't need to end on a freaking cliffhanger. Again, it's a murder mystery, but the murder mystery got solved like three episodes in when they're like, oh. It's not actually Osha. It's May who's killing all these people. Whatever, man. Three out of ten. If I do watch 
The Acolyte Season 2. Uh, God help us. I hope it doesn't come out until like 2030. I'll be forcing Brady to watch it with me and uh, we'll go from there. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I'm uh, over it. <laughs> Skeleton Crew is next. I don't know if I'll be watching that. I don't even know if it's like a, a live action thing, but we'll see. We'll see. See you in the next one.